can I grab a photo? Because I love your sunglasses so much. You're so fun. You can just keep just all oh, the jewelry. Um, so good. Oh, you could just put it. Yeah, like that. It's great. That is so good. Blingy, thank you. Uh, my photos say way more about my mental state at the time. Oh, that's fun. She is fun. What's the... It's like my visual just diary. Is... Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. It's just like people have it right now. I prefer when it's candid, honestly. Because like, yeah. then you... Even a hand will betray itself when you repose it or something. Like... Shit. I don't tell a big story, I tell a small story. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> I like to turn out good. <laughs> I like to cut through here. There's always good stuff over here. That was so good. Some good stuff happening. I can already see. people can glean from it something about fashion or society at large, great. But for the most part, it's my story. I really think it's like the best tool for getting to know yourself. And that's really, for me, all it's good for. <laughs> I don't know. Everything happens so fast. Like, it's all happening a split second and then I can go and look at it later and be like, what is it about that face that I like? It's crazy what's happening. Like, what is happening? I'm like, I'm like overwhelmed. Excuse me. Can I grab your awesome photo? Sure. Okay. Oh my God. Smile. Thank, Thank you. you. Wait, smile, smile, smile. <laughs> yes. It's more fun. Yes, smile, smile. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Can <laughs> I see it? See, it's more fun when you smile. It is. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so cute. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Story of my life. Oh, look at this dude. So cute. Oh, he's so cute, but then also, like, looking at a phone, it's just so boring. <laughs> some people bore the fuck out of me, excuse me, but, like, some people just don't have the spark. Maybe they have the spark for other people. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody that I shoot, 100% are people that I'm just like, they have like a glow around them and I'm like, ooh. I had two great high school teachers changed my life. I was so lost. I was like a queer kid and they just like, just totally lost. And they are just like, oh, you can write and you can take these photos. Oh, and you like film here. We're gonna just nurture this in you. And they literally told my parents that I'd be okay. And then they just like pushed me in this direction that like I might never have found without them. And it just brought me so much joy. Like if I could be that, even on a very tiny level for some kids somewhere, it's awesome. I wasn't a cool kid. I was like a really awkward, nerdy kid who like, and I'm still that person. Like I didn't like, skip off school to like hang out at the mall and like <laughs> do coke i was like literally like sitting by my locker reading i was just bored out of my mind and i just didn't what well, i'm not good in groups like i don't know i just didn't fit in and it was really painful so once like it's always the same for me like if i'm lost if you put something in my hand and give me something to do i'm gonna do it i'm gonna have a good time doing it i'll figure it out and that takes my mind off of the anxiety Literally to get myself up out of bed, I would grab a camera and my one dog, I only had one dog at the time, and would walk to Larchmont and take photos. And that just got me out of the house every day and gave me purpose, and then that ended up turning into a career, like, oddly. Larchmont was so suburban, right in the middle of the city, and was very different from New York and reminded me of growing up in the suburbs of Toronto. There's so many characters. There's a lot of old Hollywood people, so a lot of like old starlet -y type. It was a playground for me, and I could just experiment all day long. And 
Like, I got yelled at a lot, so that was part of the learning experience. Also, I was experimenting with flash. To look at it, it's so raw, and um, uh, you see a lot of my ideas that I was working on. I wasn't talking to anybody about my work. I wasn't shooting it with anybody. I wasn't showing anybody the work. It was a time for me where I was like reminiscing a lot about my life and my past and how I had gotten to this place and, you know, a very emotional time for me. And like, I took a lot of joy out of memory. And so I was, that's when I started doing close up. I was practicing that, how to get close enough to people, how to fill the frame in a way that only showcased the thing that I wanted to show. So that kind of consistent, deliberate practice, for good or bad, like rain or shine, yelled at, not yelled at, um, feeling good about my life, not feeling good about my life, I would do this. It was the first time that I had um, committed to myself in a long time, um, because in New York I was always hustling, I was producing, and it was very difficult. My schedule was crazy. I, like, found myself again. And I found it on Larchmont. It was so weird. If I think about it, I get emotional about it. Like, um, that, like, changes your life when you recognize that if you just put small steps into something consistently, like, didn't matter my mood, didn't matter if it was snowing or raining, didn't matter, I would just hit the street. Literally, I shot every day for a year until everybody just despised me. I think after a while, I wore out my welcome. It's basically chaos. <laughs> so I need you, you. Mm, don't need you. Need you. Okay. Okay. Where's my car keys? Got those? No. Shit. What did I do with my car keys? Ta da. Yeah. Have your sunglasses. My sunnies are right here. Well, have a good time. I hope there's some awesome weirdos out there. Yeah. That you get to see. Okay. Yeah. I love you. Bye. Oh, I can't even talk. It takes all of my focus and it takes all of my energy. Like sometimes at the end, like I just need to sleep for a minute or something, or I'm very scatterbrained. When I start shooting, I just go into a zone. <laughs> These people are getting got like, that's so cute. I can't even. Usually I shoot by myself and I, I just get hyper focused. Something happens to me physically, something happens to me mentally and emotionally that locks me in. It's like um, a meditation. I'm very, very hyper uh, present. You just look, look at her, look at her. And it's magical. It's, it's probably some of the only times in my life where I'm not present. Thanks so much. Thank you, you look so, so cute. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> You know, I, we all share our like mental space with so many things these days. And so to be able to be that focused and that, can I get a portrait? Just like that leer is a gift. I just don't yeah. want to question too much. Thanks friend, you're awesome. Overthinking things is horrible. I, I'm very torn. People are like, you should go do your masters and clarify for yourself. And going to school is like the last thing on my mind. Like. Okay, don't smile. I did film school and then I taught graduate school in New York for filmmaking. And all of that, like, talking about stuff just kills the, the rawness. And I, I understand some people make very beautiful, thoughtful, well-constructed things. And we need those people too, and we need that stuff. I'm just not one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, he had such a good face, but I think he gave me the finger. I know he told me to fuck off in English style. Hello again. Oh no! Oh, so sad. Oh no, you look good. All right, thank you. Sometimes I see myself shooting and I just look like such a dick. Do you know what I mean? Like real talk. But that's what you gotta do to get those photos. I like to check myself a lot, but I also leave it up to people to say no. 
Or what are you guys doing pictures for? Oh. But some people might disagree. Oh, I love this. So. I mean, people want to be seen generally, I think, and I'm not, like, you look at me, nobody's going to be like, she's fucking aggressive, yeah. horrible human being. Uh -huh. I think the act is aggressive, and I recognize that. But also, then you look at me, and I'm certainly not threatening it anyway. Thank you. One year, so you're six months long, and then you should. Yes, and what is it? You just look amazing you have no with permission. the sky. Oh yeah, no, we you do. You have no permission to. Do you realize that? No, but I, we do. Yeah. Do you realize you that? Ask me to take my picture. You, yes, no, thank you. Oh, sadly. No, no, no. You can do it with a crowd, and not my face. Okay. Okay. Don't do it again. Okay. All right. But you gotta tell them about don't the law. Tell them. Tell them about the law. Get the hell out of here. Okay. You got one good one. You got one good one. His friend knew. His friend knew. His friend was like, it's probably property. When I was like, scared, like some people really yell at me. Or some people are unstable, I think, and like it triggers something when I photograph them. I completely understand just like how invasive it is to have your photo taken in public. I like on one hand, it's very selfish on my end. I think that there's a great good that comes from eventually looking back on public life. Twice. Oh, oh, look at this guy. Oh my God, he's like a Christian guitar player or something. Our life is becoming so curated. Even our like real lives are becoming curated and everything's so polished all the time. And I think it's really important. Not as a necessarily a reflection of what, you know, reality. You know, it's a whole other conversation we can have about what's real and what's not real. And I love having that conversation because um, I, I don't think photography is real at all um, but there's still you know things that we can anchor ourselves to in the frame and understand that oh in 1953 people wore hats and towns were segregated and kids smoking the street or whatever whatever it is that like it's a document of a time and so for that I think it's invaluable we get um, you're in a public space doing your thing yeah. right yeah. but like to come into our space in like close portrait range uh -huh. and like throw off what we're doing and okay. then not even talk oh, to like us in a topical way oh, or yeah, like to offer it. to send the well, photos to us like you I'm could be using to. them commercially yeah. you know and then that's oh, like no. nobody will ever be able to use you commercially because I didn't get I, under, sorry, not I understand no, but that no. that's like the that's our worry maybe yeah. and oh. we don't we don't know that oh, yeah, you're not I am or anything, that. Yeah. Um, I'm a street photographer mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw a nice moment and I took it. I'm happy to give you the photo if you want. I don't know if it turned out very good, but... Either way, it'd be nice if you just, like, set the room <laughs> yeah. or... Oh, yeah. We Usually, were, like, like I get in and then I see people are in their zone. Sometimes I have a conversation. Sometimes I see people are in the zone and I don't want it ruined. I'm just, like, in and out. I took a few photos of you, so that's probably... Usually I'm, like, one photo and I'm bye. That's why I like people to see how I work, because I don't yeah. think they get... Either they think, like... It's easier than it is to do, or that I'm ruder than I am, or that it's like completely posed all the time, or they just don't understand the energy of it. I, that's why if some people get mad at me or get crazy or whatever, or like don't like it, don't think it's authentic, whatever bullshit, I'm like, you come with me and we'll go out on the street and shoot together and we'll see what happens. I love a cigarette, like. I think a lot about generosity of spirit with people for both me and them. It's like a really mm -hmm. special moment. They can both go away with being like, wow, I have this interaction with a stranger and it was really lovely. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks for stopping. Bye. Sometimes they yell at me and they're upset or they don't understand why I would want to take their photo or they've been told they're like horrible looking or they've been told whatever lines they've been told that shut them down and it makes me really sad. Um, or they won't let me take the photo. But mostly, I think that I'm very interested in just the beauty of the everyday. But, um... Oh, you have, you just me, like, oh my God. That's why. Yeah, that's it. How about so taking a picture cute. with me? Yeah.
Hey, oh, take, I don't photograph well. Take a picture. <laughs> yeah. What's your name? Michelle. Grosso. Michelle, this is Michelle. Yeah. And what is your name? Josh. Josh and Michelle, annoying people on the boardwalk. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. We do our best. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm an atheist and I, I'm kind of a firm believer that just like what's around us is so incredible and beautiful and complex and amazing and worthy of our introspection and, and all that stuff that we don't necessarily need the fantasy. I like fantasy too, but we, it's like we don't need it. So when we attribute all these like values to things, but I think it's skewed and wrong and off and like literally just the most average person could be just really phenomenal looking or like the way they carry themselves or... I just want to explore that and celebrate it and try and show people that you don't only have to shoot these, you know, fantastically, you know, general, beautiful people. You can find beauty all over the place and in strange places and corners and average places. Oh, wait, no fuck. Please. Like, give me something, give me something, something. Like, yes. Yes! You too, you too! Yes! <laughs> you guys are fucking awesome! It's haunted me my whole life. Like being someone who's awkward and not traditional looking and like queer and all of that stuff, it's just like, you know, never good enough, never hitting the right mark, never, you know, like, you just gotta please yourself in the end. Like, it's made me very strong. Thank you, have a good one! Oh my god, it's just like fucking cute as F. I'm very, 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 and I, I'm so happy to be able to say this, very clear on how all the various adventures of my life and aspects of my life and choices I made have gotten me to this moment and how happy I am about it. <laughs> you know, not everybody likes my work, that's fine. Not everybody hires me to shoot for them. It's fine. Can't please everybody because of shit. But, like, I think for what I do, I'm good at it. And I can say that with, like, some pride. And I think it all, I can, like, kind of figure out for myself, like, all the different ways that different aspects of my life have brought me to this point and why I'm good at what I do and how lucky I am that I've like found this task almost or this like outlet that taps into the millions of different things that I've done in my life. But yeah, I didn't mean to ruin your moment or disrupt your day or be no weird or anything. Awesome. You're awesome. Michelle Grosko. Maxwell. Hi, awesome. Michelle. How are you doing? Thanks for taking the time to come over and talk. All right. Good luck with your music. Yeah, of course. Not here, you know? <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm really glad yeah. we interacted. Yeah, cool. It's been enlightening. So oh, good. Yeah. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Have fun. Wow, that's never happened to me before. I'm not even kidding. Like, ever has somebody come? Oh, I'm looking at the photos now, and they're quite nice. And he's going to like them, probably. Uh, I just take photos all the time with people oh. around LA on the street. But well, I loved how That's your jacket so cool. was tied on the <laughs> sofa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, like details. Keep doing what you're doing. Yes, thank you. I'll see you. See you around. Well, that was the nicest thing people, <laughs> strangers, have said to me in a long time. That's nice.